Someday we're all going to look back at the sweet baby ink situation being like, holy crap, can you believe just how deep that rabbit hole went? What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash JT. And today we're going to be talking about a New York Times article that is running defense for Ubisoft's Assassin's Creed Shadows by using a source that was secretly in the background previously working at Sweet Baby Inc. And of course, they're not going to disclose that because it wouldn't help their case. But still, the hoops that you have to be jumping through just to try to defend this game because you are shoving DEI down everyone's throat so hard that you're just like, please, just believe us. We went with Yasuke because... He was a good character for us to use. It wasn't because he was black, guys. I swear it wasn't because he was black. It's because, uh, uh, uh somebody help me. Smash JT. Hit that subscribe, give me a like, and check out SmashJT.com for the full article breaking down how Ubisoft is running full defense mode using their friends over at the New York Times to play defense for what has been the biggest PR nightmare in recent gaming history. Well, I guess outside of Concord, but that's a little bit different. In a recent collaboration between Ubisoft and the New York Times, a weak as hell effort was made trying to shift the narrative surrounding the increasing controversy of Assassin's Creed Shadows. The game being set in feudal Japan features the historical figure of Yasuke as its protagonist. Criticism has been surrounding this game and the portrayal of Yasuke as a samurai which he has been proven not to be, and this was just basically fan fiction written by Thomas Lockley to sell a book that Ubisoft was like, sure, that fits our narrative, so we'll go with it. But it didn't just stop at Yasuke. It also had to do with the Chinese architecture, how they stole war signs from Japanese war reenactors, how they stole the One Piece sword and put that on display, pretending that it was something that was part of the feudal Japan. Like, they didn't do any research. They did it half-assed, and then they went forward telling everyone just to eat it up and believe it because it's in the name of DEI. Just trust us or else you're a bigot. But that doesn't work anymore. And Japanese people were pissed off about it. Enough to take to their YouTube channel and say, no, we're going to downvote the hell out of this in addition to taking to Twitter and tell Ubisoft that we don't appreciate this, we're not on board with this, we don't support it, and we don't like what you're doing with our history by injecting DEI into it where it doesn't belong. Instead of trying to interview someone who's quote unquote a source, all you need to do is verify it for yourself and investigate. Go to Ubisoft Japan's Twitter account, scroll through it, find some information and randomly pick on something that someone said and try to justify, do you really think that this many people are fake accounts? Or, more likely, Japan's really pissed off. But that's neither here nor there. Let's enter Kazuma Hashimoto, if that even is his real name, because information has come out where it could have actually been based on an old Japanese character from an anime called Kazuma Hashimoto, where that's not even his real name. And more information came out where he's not even Japanese and was not even born in Japan. According to his own words on Twitter, he said, the Ice Worm Festival was created in Cordova, Alaska, my hometown, during the 1960s as a way to ward off the winter blues. And he also said, Sorry, I'm just used to a gallon of milk costing $4 or more in Alaska and then $3 plus in California and $2 plus in Oklahoma and then back to $3 in New York City. Now, this is someone that supposedly is an expert in Japanese verbiage and words and history and was supposedly the person being trusted by the New York Times. And on their own Twitter, they said, Happy Trans Day of Visibility. I'm Kazuma, which, no, you're not. That's a name that you just picked for yourself. A half-Japanese trans man. I don't even know what to believe about you anymore because everything you say seems to be a lie or something you make up about yourself. Who works in translation and journalism. 
I write media analysis primarily concerned with video games and Japanese pop culture. I dress like a Niyami Kojima character in my spare time and Moonlight as a VTuber, which we'll get to that in just a second. And yeah, this dude seems totally normal and someone to trust as a source for this kind of stuff. Also, happy Trans Awareness Week. I'm a trans man who writes about politics and examines pro-imperialist propaganda in media, specifically video games. Okay, so he's not a journalist, he's an activist. Is anyone really surprised? So not only is he someone that says he's some name that he's not, he says he's someone from Japan and he's not, and he leaves out vital information that he worked for Sweet Baby Inc. under consultancy. But no, the New York Times decided to interview this person and use them as the source of truth for what the sentiment in Japan really is when they don't even live in Japan and they're not even from Japan. And Japanese isn't even their first language. This is a cosplayer that they don't even know who they really are as a human being because they're so busy cosplaying anything but who they actually are. Before it was just people like speculating about my race. Once again, people are like, he's probably not really Japanese, always oh, half Japanese. He's probably uh, half Korean, half Chinese, you know, the usual nationalist stuff. This person writes a lot and they consider themselves a journalist, of course, but they're an activist. When you start seeing some of the ridiculous propaganda that they put out there up to and including how Animal Crossing needs to acknowledge Japan's history of colonial rule and why that's important to the discussion around Animal Crossing? Like, <laughs> what the hell is wrong with this guy? But that's only the beginning of the stuff that this guy gets into. And shout out to Grums and John Trent and That Park Place for a bunch of the screenshots before everything got locked down and shut down and went in protected mode. Because of course, that's what these people, when they get caught, always do. Hashimoto was interviewed in the New York Times article and didn't say anything about working at Sweet Baby Inc. And while people might hear that and be like, well, what the hell does Sweet Baby Inc. have to do with Ubisoft's game? They're two different companies and we don't have any correlation between Sweet Baby Inc. and how they didn't work on Assassin's Creed or maybe they did. We don't know for sure. I mean, we do know that they have worked on Ubisoft games, but we haven't confirmed specifically Assassin's Creed. So how do you could draw the connection with this and why is it this guy's fault? And ultimately you look at it and you're like, well, Kim Belair is a former Ubisoft employee. Kim Belair is now the marginalized CEO of Sweet Baby Inc. and also hired this person. And you gotta connect the dots and be like, well, all these people know each other. They all work in the same industry. They all work with the same companies. It stands to reason that they're gonna run defense for a company that's facing a PR nightmare and they're gonna pretend that everything's fine, which is exactly what Hashimoto did. In the New York Times article, it says, Kazuma Hashimoto, a Japanese consultant and translator in the video game industry, said the reception of Assassin's Creed Shadows was mostly positive in Japan. Okay, let's stop right there. No, it wasn't. In fact, it was so bad in Japan that Ubisoft was forced to issue a basically four page apology trying to explain themselves about what they were doing with their game and how it was basically being completely misunderstood by Japan. Japan had a right wing part of their government looking into potentially taking action against Ubisoft. The fans of the game were taking to the internet saying they aren't having it. Yet this guy had the nerve to talk to the New York Times and say, no, 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 no. That was just um, Americans that just really don't like Ubisoft going through the extra effort of making hundreds of thousands of fake accounts and putting all this information through Google Translate and getting it wrong and putting Japanese out there that wasn't proper Japanese. And that's how he was able to tell that all these hundreds of thousands of accounts were fake. And we're just supposed to believe that guy? It was people in the West who were upset with seeing Yasuke as a samurai, he said, explaining that many of the negative online comments written in Japanese appeared to have been roughly translated from English. What an awesome way to play defense for a company you're trying to protect by making something up and saying, hey, don't question it. I am the Japanese translator expert. You guys don't know. I'm the one that you guys source for all this stuff. 
so I am the source of truth. This whole situation strikes me as eerily familiar to the IGN hit piece against game science when Rebecca Valentine and Ki Hu Chan got together and purposefully mistranslated information to make game science look as bad as possible. And I feel like that exact situation is happening all over again here. These activists have found that translations are an avenue that they can use as a get out of jail free card. If anyone tries to question them, they can say they are the translation experts and you're not allowed to question that. But when it got found out that Hashimoto used to work at Sweet Baby Inc. from February 2020 to April 2023, that's three years and three months. So it stands to reason that even if this individual did not work on Assassin's Creed Shadows throughout that time, they probably made some strong bonds with people that work there that probably were like, hey, you don't work here anymore. Do you mind talking to the New York Times and just saying something, giving a spin to this so it doesn't look so bad for us? And let's try to redirect the conversation, change the narrative, and try to get people just thinking as we get closer to the launch of this massive game that we have to be successful because Ubisoft stock and company is completely in the dumps right now and everything's going to hell and they're throwing everything at the wall and hoping something sticks. Can you guys just please run defense for us and just say something nice and, and maybe people won't question it. But when I dive deeper into Hashimoto, it reveals that his involvement in the narrative may be part of a much broader agenda. Not only has he worked for Sweet Baby Inc., but he's also an activist for so many of these other sites. And writing these ridiculous stories over the years, you put it all together, and it's clearly someone who has a history of pushing progressive talking points, and it's well documented. And I cannot understate what a huge deal it is that Ubisoft was trying to get the New York Times a massive, publication out there as much as people don't trust mainstream media new york times still holds weight i don't know how much weight anymore but still holds weight and they're trying to use that to shift the direction shift the narrative for the entire industry and then if people will start sourcing the new york times as a source of truth you can't question it. So they get this Hashimoto guy that's clearly indoctrinated in their group think, and it's someone that's not gonna stray from the values, and he's gonna say whatever he needs to say to be a yes man for these corporations, and he's gonna go in there and play the best defense he can to push Assassin's Creed Shadows, and when the New York Times says, oh, this is a trusted translator with a long history of working in the game industry, this is a respectful character, nobody's gonna say anything about it until it comes out that in the background we find out, nope, He's not trustworthy. He worked at Sweet Baby Inc. He has all these other articles that he's written that are very questionable. And it's not somebody that I would use as a professional source. But by using him as a professional source, it exposes just how weak their argument is right now. They have nothing to stand on. And they're literally, like I said, throwing everything at the wall and hoping something sticks so people just stop questioning the game and go out and buy it. At this point, Ubisoft is so up a creek without a paddle with Assassin's Creed Shadows that I don't think anything can save them. And honestly, I am here for it. I want to see this whole thing burn because they deserve it. By using Yasuke as the main protagonist of the game and trying to pretend that it's totally fine and making up every story they can. And when they get called out on it, they start pulling things out of their ass and being like, oh, no, 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 it's not what you think. Oh, it's actually just historical fiction. Oh, no, 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 actually it's just fiction. Uh, you guys can't question because it it's just a video game now. Like, here's the thing. There was no reason to choose the person you did except for pushing a DEI agenda. And you can't even admit that. And honestly, at the end of the day, I think gamers might actually be a little bit more receptive to it if you're just honest and say, yeah, that's why we did it. But you're not going to do that because obviously that's going to make your whole house of cards come crumbling down. So anyways, I'm going to leave it there. If you guys want more information, check out SmashJT.com for the full article. It goes into a lot more depth than what I get into right now because holy crap, like I started this off with, it is a rabbit hole with Sweet Baby Ink that just never ends. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you appreciate what I'm doing, hit that join button. And as always, you stay smashing. And I didn't put my LinkedIn to private. I totally forgot. And so people found out that I've done consultant work under um, Sweet Baby Inc. And I've written for Polygon and IGN. And those are apparently like the three big alt-right flags. Well, I can say that I didn't do any consultation work on Assassin's Creed Shadows. Um, 
I the stuff I did with Sweet Baby, I probably will never be able to talk about. Smash it.